Hey guys, my name is Ashley. I'm making videos to review for the Vitney. Um, my Vitney is in 50 days, so if you have to take your Vitney soon, or if you just want to review what technicians should know, then stick around with me. Let's review together. If you have any like comments or anything, make sure you write them down. Let me know what you think. In today's video, I'm just going to be talking about husbandry, how to restrain, and then Vitney puncher sites and some reproductive stuff. In the next video, what I'll be talking about is viral diseases, any internal parasites, external parasites, things like that is what I'll be talking about in the next video. So um, this video is just like a general overview. Anyway, let's just go ahead and get into it. Birds are pretty interesting. They really depend on their living environment and their situation inside the house. So um, their cage, their cage mates, their humans, the food, everything around them has to pretty much be lined up and specific to their needs. If we think about the way that birds are in the wild, because there are like one or two generations removed from being wild animals. so. If we think about their lifestyle outside of our homes, they are flying around, looking for food, looking for mates, and they depend a lot on the sunlight and the seasons. So whenever it's spring, they're gonna find mates, nest, lay eggs, and then um, you know if it's winter, if it's summer, the way that they act is gonna be different. The way that the sun is during different season changes right so we have more sunlight during some seasons less sun sunlight in some seasons and for birds when they are living inside of a house inside of our homes it is perpetual spring if you will so they're gonna have free food whenever they want fresh water whenever they want the lights inside the house are gonna be on for the majority of the day because that's how we live it could be past the time that the sun goes down we have the lights on we go to work we come back you know it's maybe 5 6 p.m. the sun's going down but we want to spend time with our birds so we take them out we have them active past the time that they're technically supposed to be active so all of these things cause issues in birds let's talk about let's talk about housing first just because it's uh, pretty straightforward so Pretty much they need a large cage. Birds in the wild fly around, they have as much space as they want, but inside our house, obviously, we don't want them to be flying around freely. We want them to be um, contained when we're not able to watch them to prevent them from injuring themselves um, or other animals in the house or breaking things or eating things that they're not supposed to be. So when they're inside their cage, they should the cage should be twice the size of their wingspan and some things that I've read recommend that there should be two cages so one cage for them to be during the day and then one cage at night that you can cover up um, for their comfort so obviously if you have more than one bird then you have to consider that as well this minimizes territorial stress so if you have more than one bird in the cage you don't want them to be fighting each other for space also you want to make sure you have enough space with that because they do have blood feathers which are called pins and these blood feathers if they get broken they just bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed so um, we want to make sure that if they are flapping their wings or if they're moving one from one perch to another they have enough space to do that without causing themselves harm a variety of perches so um, the little sticks make sure that there's different areas for them to jump because um, bumblefoot is a condition that is it's pododermatitis so it's just inflammation of their feet and this can be caused by not having a variety of different perches to stand on exercising their feet there should be toys in their environment as well obviously making sure that the toys are big enough and strong enough to withstand their beaks and their um, their feet you should always daily check the toys to make sure that they're not broken or you know something's missing like oh my god my bird ate something their dishware should be ceramic or stainless steel and we clean we clean the cage the dishes everything with a ratio of one to ten bleach one being bleach and ten being water spray everything down rinse everything off and make sure you're scrubbing off 
everything off of the perches, the bowls, everything like that. The food and water bowls should be cleaned out every single day. If you can do it twice a day, that's even better because uh, mold typically tends to grow in those areas. And um, you can also prevent like the spread of bacteria or the growth of bacteria inside of their cages. We wanna make sure we're use utilizing UVA and UVB lighting as well for them. But all of these things, if they're not correct to the specific breed, um, the specific size, this can all cause uh, poor preening. Um, if you're not feeling good, you're not going to take care of yourself. Just like cats, if they're not feeling good, they're not going to lick themselves. Something's wrong with them. It could be a disease, but it could also be just caused by stress. So when they have, you know, too small of a cage, if they are not matched up correctly with another bird, this can all cause issues, um, making them not wanting to preen also cage mate trauma like i said before environmental trauma so hitting themselves on um, different objects that are hanging maybe the toys are too close together the perches aren't far enough apart or the the cage isn't wide enough for them to sit or flap their wings comfortably and stress bars so stress bars can be caused by a poor environment so stress bars are common in small and like baby birds but if you're seeing stress bars in birds that are from 10 to like 15 or older then that means that there's something going on maybe the cage isn't placed in the correct area and there's too much movement around causing them stress maybe the you added a new member to the household or something like that just be aware that stress bars are little lines going perpendicular to the feather so you can i'll show i'll show you pictures so. we have diet so i'll go into diet really quickly that's also something that's pretty straightforward um but you know, it's something that we do need to know, especially for the Vitney. Not specifically, I don't think that they're gonna ask specifically what um, fruits and vegetables you need, but I'll just go ahead and give you that information just so if you do experience, you know, if you do have an owner come in with a bird and you're, you're all set up and you're like, I got this doctor, I don't need your help. Um, so for cytosine birds, these birds are parrots, parakeets, and macaws. Um, they get free feed pelleted diets um, and then canaries and finches get seed based diets about 50% of their diet should be that so their specific you know the the bird food that you get from a store from your veterinarian or something like that about 40% of their diet should be vegetables just like us we need vegetables in our diets for um, the nutrients that we're not getting from pro from our meat sources from our, all the dessert that we're going to be eating this halloween the vegetables that they should be eating are green ones yellow ones and orange ones like orangey red ones i guess so you have broccoli dandelions brussels sprouts and spinach and then carrots sweet potatoes corn and squash so these are very good for fiber vitamin a vitamin b calcium and trace minerals then they're going to get five percent protein and dairy five percent should be fruit that's things that are like high in fat and high in sugar and high in salt just like us like we don't want to be eating like too many of these things every single day it causes a lot of issues obesity it does cause that like i said that perpetual spring type of thing so that causes a lot of like reproductive issues as well which i'll just talk about and then obviously like there's things that you shouldn't feed that are toxic that are not good that are going to cause um, problems so don't feed alcohol I don't understand why you would, but don't feed alcohol. Um, avocados is a cardiotoxin. Uh, chocolate causes vomiting, diarrhea, and seizures. And um, comfrey. Do you guys know what comfrey is? I didn't know what it was. And I was like, I've never heard of this before in my life, but that's me. Um, it's a plant. So this, uh, like, it's like plant with like little purple flowers at the end of them. This causes liver damage. Next is behaviors. So the behaviors that birds have should be bird flock behaviors, but a lot of times they have human flocks because they're obviously they're staying with us in our house, in a cage. We take them out, we cuddle them. Oh my God, they're so cute. Don't do that. That's so rude. You know why? Because birds have to have mates, especially when they're in this perpetual spring. They have a nest um, type of environment. They are safe and comfortable and then they have a mate and who is the mate you are the mate <laughs> your hand your hand is the mate so um 
This causes territorial aggression. So you want to make sure that they're paired up um, appropriately <laughs> and they have a bird flock. So when they match with a human, they have territorial aggression. This is like screaming, biting. Um, they have dominant aggression. So if they have chosen you as their person, then they're going to be aggressive toward your dogs, your cat, like your husband, your significant other, and then they're going to have exaggerated hormonal um, behaviors as well. So you can look into that. If they're not shown appropriate behavior, then this leads to excessive egg laying, egg yolk peritonitis, hypocalcemia, oviductal and cloacal prolapse, tumors, and egg binding, which is just dystocia. So if you think about it, if they're not getting the appropriate amount of calcium or vitamins that they should be getting from their diet, this means that they're not able to use the amount of calcium that they need to create their eggs for egg laying. And what that, what that in turn causes is that their eggshells might be too soft. So when their eggshells are too soft, when they push to lay the egg, they actually just like crush the egg or um, maybe the egg is too soft so it just doesn't it just kind of like squeezes and then goes back you know that's egg binding it gets stuck inside of them and then they try to produce another egg and they can be like a chronic overlayer so they're just like gonna lay just a, a crap ton of eggs all the time and this means that they're using up so much calcium it's gonna cause um, a calcium deficiency so hypocalcemia egg yolk peritonitis is um, when ovulation occurs outside of the oviduct into the abdomen and egg binding, so let's review that. Poor nutrition, hypocalcemia, large eggs, obesity, tumors, and infection of the oviduct, stress, and genetics. Their restraints as far as like clinical um, practice. So I do have a little like, okay, I don't have birds. Um, this is something that I've actually never really dealt with in my clinical experience. With that being said, let's practice some restraints on my bird. <laughs> um, so for a small bird, you have to use your index finger and your middle finger and you will put it around their neck and then you will grab the, their body with the last three fingers. The reason that you want to leave space in their chest is because they, they don't have a diaphragm. They have air sacs that are um, filled with air and contracted into their lungs uh, by the movement of their chest. So if you're holding them by their chest, they're not able to breathe. For large birds, you want to do the Elizabethan grip. This is with your thumb and your pointer finger like this, I guess. Don't be afraid to kind of hold them snugly on there obviously don't try to choke them out but if you hold them on their neck they have complete cartilage rings that prevent them from collapsing you're not going to choke them or anything if you hold them by their neck you're supposed to hold them by the neck so there are restraint boards also useful for radiograph and they're on anesthesia so you can uh, handle them easier and then for venipuncture So you're going to use the right jugular vein. You can use both the left and the right, but I guess the right is um, bigger. So whatever is easier, right? And then you have the basilic vein, which is on the um, wing. And then you have the median tarsal metatarsal, which is on their leg. And um, IM injections are given in the chest. You don't want to give it into their lower body. Their renal porta system doesn't allow for us to use their lower half as a place to give injections. You want to give it up um, in the upper body, especially in smaller birds. So that is what I have for you today. I hope that was like a good little review for you. It was for me, um, mainly because I didn't really know too much about birds, like I said before. Next time I am going to talk about more specific, um, disease specific things for them, but that's something that I have to study today. And hopefully I'll be ready for you guys soon.
50 days guys, 50 days. I look excited, but I'm not. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>